are just how that maybe at some point you have to go in uh, on your own. Is that a suggestion that you'd like to send in federal agents to cities like Portland or Chicago? No, what, it's what not, but that? yeah. No, it's not. It's uh, just that uh, we're tired of watching every night with Portland. They're on night 104 now, and uh, we're tired of watching it because it could be solved in an hour. And we're tired of watching a mayor that has no clue what's going on. And people are calling our office and people are calling Washington that live in Portland and live in the state. And they're saying, please, please send help. And the governor, we call the governor often. And they say, no, we don't need your help. But I say, your community is burning down. They don't need our help. Now, I don't know if that's political. I don't know what is going on. Certainly not common sense, but we could solve it just like here. We all work together. We came in the federal government, the state government, the city government. Everybody worked together. The senator, the congressman, it was like a beautiful thing. It just came, it just worked. And it was done almost instantly. People were amazed. And as you probably will have to report, maybe people are surprised. There's been zero problem in terms of your safety, our safety. I feel so safe. Four, four or five days ago, James, we couldn't have done this. The law enforcement's been so great. And we could do this in Portland so quickly, so easily, it would, it would be incredible. We would have done it in Seattle. We were all set to go into Seattle, as you know, the following day. And they heard that, and they sent the police in, and the police did a good job. But they, the people gave up. They were exhausted. They were there for a, a long time, and they gave up. They were exhausted. Uh, so we're there. I mean, we'd love to help Oregon. We'd love to help, uh, really love to help Portland, because we could solve that problem so easily. We have the people. They're ready. They could be there in less than an hour, less than an hour, and it would all end. And they got a glimpse of that in this great state. They got a really good glimpse of it. It happened very quickly. And now, I mean, I see it. They're already rebuilding. You're already rebuilding your stores. You'll be rebuilding your stores soon, your camera shop. So uh, we don't want to do that, but at some point we're going to have to do it. We're going to have to do it, okay? to the Blake family, I know you didn't get a chance to talk to them, but what would you say to them in terms of the pain they're going through and the questions they have about what happened? Well, I feel terribly for anybody that goes through that. That's why I was so honored to meet the pastors. Uh, I feel terribly for anybody that goes through that. As you know, it's under investigation. It's a big thing happening right now. I guess it's under local investigation. I know, Bill, you're also participating. But it's under uh, your local investigation group unit. And uh, I hope they come up with the right answer. It's a complicated subject, to be honest with you. Uh, but I feel terribly for anybody that has to go through. And uh, I didn't get to speak to the mother. I hear she's a fine woman. I've heard that from the pastor, uh, a really fine woman. But uh, you can see, when I spoke to the pastors, I, I see exactly what it is. And they understand where I am. And if we can help, we're going to help. But it is a question. It's, it's under investigation. Uh, a lot of things happened with that, and other things, frankly that we're looking at very, very closely, okay? Mr. President, you know the police do not wear body cameras. Should every police officer in the United States wear a body cam? A body cam? Uh, well, that's very interesting. Let me ask Bill to answer that question. Go ahead, Bill. Well, generally, that's, that's a local uh, issue for each police force and each community, the political leaders of a community, to decide upon. But I think most law enforcement people I know uh, who were originally skeptical of body cameras are now coming around to feeling that uh, they actually are a net benefit. It's a very tough, you know, it's a very, the whole thing with the body cam, you read it and you read two sides of the story. How do you feel about it, Daniel? I believe that body cameras would be very helpful for You think they're good? I, I believe they show both sides where right now Officers would be vindicated for some of the things that they've been accused of, and certainly, if there were inappropriate actions, those would be captured. But you overall, uh, I uh, support them. How about you? We're good with it. We're, it's already been put into the budget for 2021, and uh, okay, so you'll be having them. We'll be having them. Okay, good. Now they I like them. Questions, the pastors. Um, the problem of police violence 
has been described as just the problem of a few bad apples, repeatedly. You're um, going to have to speak up, please. Yeah. Uh, the problem of police violence has been described by you, in, including the President, uh, as just bad apples, a few bad apples, or people who choke occasionally. Um, some African-American community leaders, and a lot of others actually, have said it's systemic. Where do you f stand on that? I don't what believe that. No, I don't believe that. I think the police do an incredible job. And I think you do have some bad apples. I think you'd agree. Every once in a while, you'll see something. And, and you do have the other situation, too, where they're under this tremendous pressure and they, they don't handle it well. They call it choking, and it happens. And uh, no, but I don't believe that at all. I think they're — I've met so many police. I have the endorsement of, like, so many, maybe everybody. And frankly, I think they're incredible people. They want to do the right thing. It's a tough job. It's a tough job. It's a dangerous job. But I, I have to say this to the police. The, uh, the people of our country love you. You don't hear that. You don't hear it from them. But the people of our country love you, and they respect you, and, they, and you know it. You feel it in your heart, or you wouldn't be doing it, or you wouldn't be doing it. But there's a great love. And when they see what goes on, and when they see a, a case like this where it's solved so quickly, they respect the police a lot, really a lot. So I, I, you should hear it, at least. To follow on that, um, we're focusing on violent uh, actions, but there have been countless nonviolent protests here in Wisconsin and across the country this summer. Uh, people calling for an end to systemic racism. Do you believe systemic racism is a problem in this country? Well, you know, you just keep getting back to the opposite subject. We should talk about the kind of violence that we've seen and. Portland and here and other places. It's tremendous violence. You always get to the other side. Well, what do you think about this or that? The fact is that we've seen tremendous violence, and uh, we will put it out very, very quickly if given the chance. And that's what this is all about. Uh, yeah, I keep hearing about peaceful protests. I hear it about everything. And then I come into an area like this, and I see the town is burned down. I mean, you look at Minneapolis. They should have acted much quicker. When we got the National Guard in there, it took literally a half an hour. You saw the scene. They formed. They walked. It was over. And they haven't had a problem of any consequence since. Their police weren't allowed to do the job that they could do. They have a very good police department, but they weren't allowed. Now they want to break it up. They want to end it. They don't want to have a police department. They want to not only defund, they want to get rid of it. It's ridiculous. So I just say this, that uh, the kind of violence that I saw. You may have protesters, but you have some really bad people, too. You have anarchists, and you have the looters, and you have the rioters. You have all types. You have agitators. And that's what you should be focusing on with your question. I keep hearing about pro peaceful protests. It's become really, I think it's hurt the media very badly, because you'll have somebody standing on one of the networks. I won't say which one, but there are more than one, many of them. <coughs> saying how it's a peaceful protest, and over the shoulder, you see the whole place is burning down. It's become a pretty common sight. So I don't view the peaceful protest. I think peaceful protesting is fantastic. I think it's great. But by and large, this is not peaceful protest. When you walk into a, an area and you see buildings that have burned down, and fortunately here we stopped it early, and so the damage is relatively minimal. But when you look at some of these areas that they just don't ask for the help, they refuse to allow us to go in and help them. And by the time you get there, the place is, is disintegrated. And then they say it was a peaceful protest. It's not a peaceful protest, and you shouldn't call it a peaceful protest. Okay, uh, one more, please. For the pastors, for the pastors, for the pastors answer more. my question, please. Have, have, my question was to the pastors. pastors. Say it again. The peaceful protests that have happened. You're going to have to speak up, sir. The peaceful protests that have happened, you've acknowledged some of them are peaceful. They're calling for structural change. Mr. Blake was shot seven times in the back. Sure. Do you believe that there is a need for structural change? What is your message? Well, I think people, people are calling for structural change, and then you could take the people of Kenosha that aren't here and that you won't see and that aren't protesting, but they want change also. They want to see law and order. That's the change they want. They want law and order. They want the police to be police. They want the police to do what they do better than anybody else in the world, and that's what they want, too. You don't see them marching, and you don't see them on the streets, but what they want is they want great police force. They want 
uh, people that are going to keep them safe, where their houses aren't broken into, where they're not raped and murdered. That's what they want. And they're protesters, too, but they don't walk down the street, up and down the street. So, uh, you know, just the way it is. Just the way it is. So I want to thank you all, and I'll see you back at the plane. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us here at Golden State Times. If you guys liked our coverage of President Trump and that news conference that he had towards the end in Kenosha, Wisconsin, then make sure that you click the thumbs up button and you share this video on social media. If you're new to the channel, we encourage you to subscribe and click that notification bell. Very important. Hopefully, YouTube notifies you in the future. Now, if you want to sign up to our email list so you can get live stream notifications, video notifications, uh, President Trump's schedule notifications, all that stuff, then go to our website, goldenstatetimes.com. Again, that's www.goldenstatetimes.com. And you will be able to sign up to our email list there to get notifications in the future. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Gold State Times, not Golden, Gold State Times on Twitter. Make sure you follow us for updates, scoops, breaking news and everything else in between. President Trump is on his way back to Washington, D.C. Live here at Golden State Times for full coverage. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and also subscribe and click that bell. Thank you so much, folks, for joining us. And we hope to see you guys here next time. Share the video, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you guys think in the comment section below.